Hey, I'm Adam Kelly. Whether you're trying to use an existing Cocoa data set or trying to create your own from scratch, the first thing you need to know is how the annotation format works. So in this video, I'm gonna break that down and help you understand each part. What we're looking at here is an annotations folder here that contains a bunch of JSON files in particular, we're going to be looking at the instances val 2017.json. And this is downloaded from cocodataset.org, the download page. And specifically, it is the 2017 train val annotations one. There are a bunch of different ones here, but we're going to focus on the train val ones. Uh, and in particular, the instances rather than the person key points or captions. And I'll link to some resources to help you understand the difference between these in the description under the video. So first off, I want to point out there's a training file and a validation file. I'm choosing the validation file because it's much smaller. This one is almost half a gigabyte and my text editor cannot even open it. In fact, if you try to open this one with the wrong text editor, it might still fail. I recommend Visual Studio Code, which is a great text editor for coding. So I've opened it already in here, and it's basically just a huge wall of text. It is not intended to be superhuman readable. It's intended to be parsed by code, in most cases Python. And I, instead of trying to like break this down and understand the entire thing, I've actually simplified it so that we can talk about a smaller version of this. But all of this stuff, the format and everything is the same. In this file, what I've done is I've taken out the pieces, the important pieces from this file and removed only, removed all the images except for two of them. So the at the high level, there's five different parts. We have an info section, a licenses section, an images section, an annotation section, and a categories section. The info section just contains information about the data set. It's encased in curly brackets and it has a description, which is a string, a URL, which is also a string, a version string, a year, which is an integer, a contributor, which in this case is a group that represents the common objects in context Coco Consortium here, and the date that this data set was created. So all of these, if you're creating your own data set, will apply, you know, you'll apply your own information to this. So if I was creating my own, I might call it Adam's data set, and then I might have immersivelimit.com because that's my website, and I'd have a version number, and I'm creating it in 2019. You get the idea. Now licenses are the legal documents that say how you can use these images. In this case, this is a Creative Commons license that applies to both of the images that I kept in this simplified version of the JSON. This is the fourth one that shows up, and we'll take a quick look back in the original instances uh, file. If we scroll up to the top, you'll see that after the info object, we have the licenses that starts right here. And there are seven different entries in this list, but I've just extracted the one that's relevant to the two images below. And as I highlight this, you'll actually see that this license is license number four. If we had more images, the licenses would correspond to whichever license was appropriate. So each license has a name, it has an integer ID, and it has a URL that will take you to more information about it. And this is in a list as denoted by these square brackets here. Images is another list. And it's a list of images as you'd expect. And just to give you an idea of the two images that we're using here, the first one is a bicycle. And this is actually an image with an overlay of the annotation on it. The original image, of course, does not have that. It doesn't have this blue part or this box. And the second image that 
is in this example are these elephants. So there's a bunch of different elephants in this picture. And so there's a segmentation for each one of them in this file. And there's only one segmentation for this bicycle. So looking in a little more detail at uh, these images, each one has an ID. And it's not to be confused with this ID. That's, that's correlated with this license portion here. Each ID here is referenced later in the annotations. And this annotation here, which I'll get to in a bit, references that image ID. It says this annotation belongs to this image. There's a Coco URL and a Flickr URL, which are the websites that actually host versions of these image. And the Flickr, Flickr, if you're not familiar, is just an image hosting website. It's where photographers can post their pictures. And when they made this data set in the first place, they took all of their images from Flickr. And so that's why that's in here. It contains a width and a height of the image in pixels, a file name, which you'll notice corresponds to the ID in this case, but there's no rule that says that they have to be the same. And then a date captured, which is in this interesting format right here, which gives you not only the date, but also the time that it was captured. And then this second one, this one is the elephant's picture. This one is the bicycle picture. So each one of these pictures has a number of annotations, but first I'm going to skip down to the categories and I'll explain this really quick. So in those two pictures, you'll notice there were only two categories. And in this case, we had a bicycle and an elephant. Each one of them has an ID. So anytime we see an ID of two for a category, it's a bicycle. And anytime we see an ID of 22, it's an elephant. The super category here is just sort of a larger grouping of things. So a bicycle is in the category of, or the super category of vehicle. And an elephant is in the super category of animal. So there are trains and planes and cars and stuff that belong in vehicle. And likewise, there are dogs and cats that belong in animal. And just to kind of show you what's happening in here, these are all the images. So if we scroll past all the images and all the annotations down at the bottom, we have categories. And you'll see that there are actually 90 categories ending in toothbrush and starting in person. And they go from one up to 90. Ours in this case are just a small sampling of that. Now back up to the annotations, because this is where it gets interesting. This first one here is the only annotation for the bicycle image. And it has an ID of its own. It has a category ID of two, which means bicycle. It has something called is crowd and is crowd of zero means kind of like is crowd is false. It is not a crowd of bicycles. It is just a single bicycle. Segmentation is the list of points that defines this shape. And I'll zoom in just to kind of emphasize that each one of these points is represented in this list as an X, Y coordinate. So this first one is an X coordinate. The second one is a Y coordinate. The third one is another X coordinate. And the fourth one is a Y coordinate. And if you took all of these in order and drew them on the picture, you get this. And then it's shaded in just to make it a little more visible. Now I want to point out here that this is actually a list of lists. So this list here is the list of vertices if there happen to be two sections of this bicycle, for example, let's say there was a person walking in front of this bicycle and it kind of obscured the bicycle a bit, we might actually have two chunks, one on this side and one on this side, and it would make two lists of the same segmentation. There's an image ID here. There's an area, which is the number of pixels kind of that are shaded in here that belong to this bike. And then the bounding box, the bounding box is this box right here. And just to give you an idea of how the X and Y coordinates work in here, both the segmentation and the bounding box start the same way. So the bounding box here is in the X direction from the edge of the picture. It's 19.23 pixels. And then from the top of the pixel, of the picture, 
Let's zoom out a little bit. It's actually, let's see, 383 pixels roughly down. And then in the case of the bounding box, these two are actually a width and a height. So it starts at 19 and then the width is 314.5 in this direction. And this one, the Y direction starts at 383 and then goes 244.46 down. So that's how this bounding box is defined. And the segmentation vertices are defined similarly. So an X direction is 164 direction in, or 164 pixels in the X and 417 in the Y. So it's starting, you know, maybe somewhere down here. Now, the second picture here is these elephants. And it's done exactly the same, same way, except there are more of them. So in this case, all of these are these elephants that show up, these bounding boxes and segmentations. I've kept, I didn't do the indentation on these just to save some space, but the first two, it's exactly the same thing. There's an ID, there's a category ID, which corresponds to elephant. It's not a crowd, it's an individual elephant, and it has a segmentation and everything that we talked about in the same one. All of these here, all of these are the elephants that show up. This last one is a little different. And I'll point it out in the image here. It's, if you look at this closely, you'll see that it's actually not even outlined. It's kind of just like, it's almost like someone painted over top of it. And that's because when the Coco dataset was created, they, they created the option to do this polygon representation of the objects inside, but they also created an option called run length encoding which lets you sort of create a mask, a pixel mask that says which pixels are not the thing and which pixels are the thing. And it was designed for when you have a large group of things that really isn't practical to draw a shape around each and every individual one. So I think a good example here is if you had a crowd of people. And I have this example here where you have this baseball stadium where you might be able to draw some of the people, but eventually it gets out of hand. And to do that all manually would be completely unreasonable. So you might shade in the crowd, either draw it in or perhaps just draw a box around it that got shaded in. And we would represent that with this is crowd of one rather than zero means this is a crowd. So we're going to treat it a little differently. And run length encoding is a way that we can actually represent that as text. So I'm going to back up really quick to our elephant picture to kind of give you a little bit of a preview, and then I'll explain it in detail. So everything's the same. Category ID, is crowd is a little different. Image ID, area, bounding box, those are all exactly the same, except for this segmentation. So the size is the image size. It's 333 in the Y and 500 in the X. And if we scrolled up and looked at it, you'd, you'd see that it's the same dimensions as the image. Then the counts. Counts is, it starts off with a number of pixels that are not shaded in. So it starts at the top left corner, counts all the way across all of these pixels, well, the of the colored part, not the white frame. But the, it counts all of these pixels, and then it goes to the next line and counts all of these pixels, and then the next line and all of these pixels. And if it adds all of those up until it finally hits the pixel just before this first sort of olive green color here, then that number is 26,454 pixels of not the thing. And then it sees two pixels that are the thing. And then it saw another 651 that were not the thing. So probably it saw two pixels and then it went all the way to the end of the line. It ignored all of these elephants because they were not part of this annotation and then came back to the other end because remember this is only 500 wide. So if we're going 600 pixels, that means it's counting all the way to the end and carrying over. And then it sees three more pixels and then it goes 13 pixels and then it sees another one. So that's kind of how this run length encoding works. And I'll give you a, a little more detailed example here with a simpler picture. So I've made this little picture with these 
pixelated little almost video game apples here. And if we blow it up, we can actually count the pixels. And if we overlay a grid, it makes it a lot easier to see the pixels. So what we would do if we wanted to create a mask that, and I say mask meaning we're going to create a white, white where there's no item and black where there, or sorry, black where there's no item and white where there is an item. And it'll look like this. This is what I mean when I say a mask. And we're, if we're going to create a segmentation of is crowd and the category happens to be apple, then we want to create these counts. And so to create these counts, we do the same thing. We count the number in this row and add the number in this row and add the number in this row. And then we add all the way up to here. And then we have our first entry in this counts list. And then there's three pixels that are the thing that are Apple. So it becomes the next entry becomes three. And then we have one pixel that's not, and then we have three again, and then we have this list that goes on. So you kind of get the idea here that that is how run length encoding works. It's much more efficient than storing an actual image because all of this, this space that is not used is, it, we don't need to store that information the only case where this wouldn't really be very effective is if we had a checkerboard pattern of white, black, white, black, white, black, because we couldn't actually take advantage of the, of the empty space. So that should give you a good idea of how the Coco dataset format looks. These are obviously, uh, this is obviously a simplified version of it, but the entire dataset looks exactly like this. And so if you understand how this simplified version works, you understand how this big intimidating version works. Hey, my face is back. So if you've watched this far in the video, I figure there's a decent chance that you are interested in creating your own Coco data set. Either that or you're just a total geek about deep learning like me, and that's totally cool too. Either way, if you want to learn how to create your own Coco data set, and maybe you don't want to sit and manually annotate thousands of images and click tiny outlines around tons of different objects, then you're in luck because I'm building a course right now. It's going to be a start to end step-by-step -step guide with detailed instructions on how you can create your own Coco data set without doing a ton of manual effort and generate thousands of images with your own custom categories. You'll be able to take pictures of your own objects and include them in your own data set without a ton of work. So the, actually, by the time you watch this, the course may already be out. So check out the link in the description below for more information. Thank you for watching.